happy Monday, everyone. Ollie and I. There we are. Hello, happy Monday, everyone. Ollie and I are ready to get going on our 10 minute art tips for today. We would really like to talk about the different stages of uh, the painting process. Um, Everyone has a different favorite part and I am really excited to hear what your favorite part is in the whole process. For me, I really love the planning stage, drawing out composition, getting everything kind of lined up and finding out whether or not it's going to really work out for me. And uh, that is where the real thrill comes. When I was studying with my mentor, Karen, she used to tell me to never get attached to the, your paintings. And one of the reasons, one of the reasons I was always able to sell and let go of my, my finished pieces is because the thrill was in the blank canvas. And that has stayed true for my entire career. I love the challenge of the blank canvas. And once the painting is finished and signed, I have no use for it. I'm ready to let it go. And it's not for me anymore at that stage. It's for somebody else to take on and to enjoy. And so for me, the planning and the drawing is really where it, the fun happens. Not necessarily the drawing part, but the blocking in of the darks, the shadows, the shapes, the that's where the thrill is um, for me personally. Uh, that's when I find out whether the painting is going to actually work out or not. And I continue on to my middle stage where I really kind of can work out some errors in the composition. If things don't work out perfectly, I can make some changes. The painting I am working on right here on my easel, I sent out a photo yesterday. You can't really see it too well here, but uh, I sent out a photo in my post yesterday on Facebook and I'm going to add in a few more trees into the foreground here because it's not quite perfect. Um, I think there's too much foreground area. It's not interesting enough. So this is the middle stage is where I kind of um, get to work out the kinks and decide whether it's going to be a successful painting or not at that stage. And then um, it's just, uh, you can see how I've just got these, these trees in, they're really, really dark at this stage. It's just laying in the shapes and I will add my light source. I will have, keep this side dark, this side in the middle tone, and then I'll have my highlights on that side. And I'll make sure that's consistent throughout the painting. The middle stage is where, you know, all of the things get kind of figured out. And to me, um, that's just the best part, the absolute best part, but that's just for me. The reason I'm doing this discussion today is actually a, from a post I saw on Instagram the other day from Veronica Funk. She's an artist based out of Airdrie, I believe. And she was saying that this is, she referred to this as kind of the ugly stage of the painting. And that's her least, her least favorite part. So I wanted to come on today and ask you what your favorite part is because I found that fascinating how we are so worlds apart, her and I, and I'm sure we all have different opinions and different uh, favorite stages. The thing with me, this is one of my faults, painting faults, is that this painting here of Island Lake has been on the go for over a year. And I get really charged, really uh, motivated to paint, paint, paint on blank canvases, get it on, get it on, get it to this stage. And then I'm like, I get a little bored once I know it's gonna kind of be a success. And I, once I know I've worked out all the issues, I know where I'm going with it, know what I'm doing with it. That's when I lose my mojo. And so then I switch to a different painting and I start another painting and I work away on that. And I oftentimes will get to a similar stage and you can kind of see, oops, this uh, peony one right behind me. That one is also another one which probably only needs maybe another hour's hour work and then it'll be done and signed. And then I can put that one up for sale. 
that too has been probably on the go for about a year and a half, maybe even longer. I just have that really bad habit of starting paintings and then putting it aside and waiting to finish it later. And the one good thing about having worked for a lot of years is that I at least know that I will eventually get the, the paintings finished. Generally, not every painting is worthy of being finished. You have to keep that in mind. But I uh, am sitting here with several paintings almost done. And in a week's time, I will probably wind up finishing them all, all in a row. I know that about myself and it's just my process and there's nothing wrong with that. And I want my students to be aware that you can do whatever works for you. You do not have to start a painting and work all the way through till the end. If you're getting frustrated or you're getting bored or you are getting um, un uninspired or unmotivated by it, put it aside for a while and go back to it later. It doesn't mean you will never finish that painting. You have to trust your own process. My process is work on a whole bunch at the same time. And you know, sometimes those paintings stay around for a long time and other times they get trashed. And sometimes I leave them for so long that they don't always, uh, are not always an example of where I'm at. So it, it is important if you're going to work on multiple paintings at a time like I do, that you don't leave them sitting for too long. This one's been a year and I think that's kind of still significant for where I am today. It's still speaking to me. It is still uh, portrays my work and where I am and what I want to say. So that's uh, well and fine. I've got one painting that I've got in the back of my closet that I'm gonna paint over. I started it probably 10 years ago and it is totally not who I am. It is not what I wanna say in any way, shape or form. The, work is, you know, uh, hopefully not as good as where I am today. If all goes well, we will continually progress and get better. So I'm hoping that this will help you to understand that you have to just trust in where you are at at all times. So once you get through um, the middle stage, you get your all your glitches worked out, your composition worked out, your problems worked out then comes the magic it is not my favorite stage that's the part i always kind of put off to later but it's really an important part of the whole process because that a stroke here and a stroke there is where the magic happens i always tell my students the magic really comes together the painting will all fuse and meld and really uh you know, different things will make certain areas pop. It will connect, there's the connecting links. It will bring everything together and you need to um, have patience at that stage. So I guess you really have to understand that the painting will have it, it'll all work out. And I, I suppose I lose interest at that stage because I know it's gonna work out, but. A lot of students don't so just bear with it hi Maureen now let me ask you have a question here now I know it isn't necessarily a bad thing to leave things for a while and come back oh you are on the same page as me Maureen I yeah it, it's my habit and um, I don't know if it's ne I don't think it's a bad habit I don't think it's a good habit uh, the most important thing is do not leave it for too many years. Make sure you go back to it before you move on um, completely. What else did I want to say? So yeah, this end stage is like where you're going to tie everything together. And a lot of times it is one stroke here and a stroke there. And you know, you've got to just kind of keep things consistent, keep it flowing. Uh, my one student that comes on my Wednesday group, that's absolutely her least favorite part. She finds it such a drudgery to finish paintings because its it, it can be a bit tedious with 
Oh, don't forget that because those one strokes can make all the difference. It can make or break a painting. So make sure you wrap the the canvases are wrapped and should be stapled on the back make sure you continue the painting around the edge that's how i do it other stu pe other painters prefer to just paint the edge a solid color and that is all right too but when you sign it make sure those edges are covered i hope this has been helpful to each of you and please do leave a message in the comments as to what your favorite stage is and how you motivate yourself to get through to the end stage. I really want to hear about it. And do not forget that I do post all of my Facebook Live tips in my Caprice Fine Art and Co. group. Uh, it can be found by clicking on the guide at the top of the group. So if you're not a member of the group, please do join. And you can refer back to these tips at any time. All right. Have a great week and keep your comments coming. Keep your questions coming. And I hope you found this useful. Have a great week, everyone. And I will see you next Monday. Bye for now.